Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and this is a base identification video uh, in this series. As always, we're looking at bases in the scout view, talking about uh, the best strategies for them, what to look for when you're choosing an army composition in general, and then looking at an attack on them that did a good job exploiting the parts of the base that fit that uh, army composition. So it's a good series if you guys are you know, trying to, if you're scouting bases, having some trouble deciding which army comps are the best for which bases and what weaknesses you should look for in bases, this is a good series for you. We have Town Hall 9, 10, and 11 action to show today. So something for everyone. Let's get right into it with this first one, uh, 10 v 11 two-star attempt. I wish I had more 11 v 11 three-stars, but they're pretty rare. Um, if I do see them, you'll definitely see them posted on the channel. But for now, um, the uh, more realistic and more practical uh, two-star, which is ever important in these wars, especially post-update. So taking a look at this base, the first thing you want to look for when you're scouting a Town Hall 11 for a two-star is, are these air defenses offset? Can I use dragons? And they don't even have to be offset, but are they away from the town hall enough that um, at least two of them can like be ignored and I can just take out the other two and then just go for the town hall with the dragons? So um, the answer to, the, uh, to this question is yes. The air defenses are a little bit offset. They're in kind of distant locations from the town hall. A good base to use dragons on. And of course, dragons are probably going to be your best bet um, post-update if, you, if, you're, if you're able to use them depending on the base. So you also have to recognize the percentage is pretty much up here. There's so many buildings, it's worth using a few baby dragons. Get that percentage because the town hall definitely has to be gotten from this direction. Uh, the dragons have, it'll be too difficult to come any other way besides coming at the short side of the base here towards the town hall. So that is how the base was attacked. And knowing that he has to pick up some percentage up here. Um, other things he was trying to do, for dragons, you have to do two things. You have to get the uh, relevant air defenses taken out, and you also have to create the funnel for them. So basically how the attacker did that is he sent in a kill squad right here, grab these two air defenses, create the funnel here, then down here do a golem and a queen, just those two things, let the queen step up, create the funnel by taking out some of these buildings, and then from there it's a straight path um, coming from the 3 o'clock side towards that town hall. Um, it's uh, important to note that you almost never want to attack a symmetrical base like this from like dead in the line of symmetry just right down the middle because um, oftentimes there's going to be air defenses that are going to take out any stray dragons on both sides. So by coming in from one kind of side of the base and taking out these two air defenses, he ensures that these air defenses won't even matter because they're the dragons will never get in range, uh, at least until the town hall is taken out and uh, the percentage is already gotten. So he kind of eliminates um, this Inferno too a little bit because it doesn't engage till the end. Whereas if you come straight down that line of symmetry in the middle, uh, oftentimes you deal with like both Infernos, a head-on air sweeper. Um, it's just typically going to be more defensive. So the side, if you can come at like an angle like this, is going to be better and it works out really nicely. Not going to uh, talk too long because I have so many awesome attacks to show. Let's get right into this one. <clears throat> uh, we have extremes with the attack. We'll fast forward. Uh, drops down a test loon. Then some baby dragons behind. Picking up this all important percentage. You got to um, think in any town hall 11 two star attempt, how am I going to get my percentage? How am I going to get the town hall? And there's subsections of that. Okay, I'm using dragons to get the town hall. How am I going to funnel them? How do they overlap? How do I get percentage while creating the funnel? <laughs> All kinds of things to think about. So the queen and the golem uh, at the bottom, like I said, the queen actually kind of walks in a bit of a funny manner. Um, she kind of goes towards the bottom, but she does her job uh, for the most part. And then taking a look at the top right of the space, another important thing to notice is it's easy bowler funneling because there's a two tile gap between the wall and the buildings inside the wall. And basically what that does is it makes it so the bowlers have to enter the compartment in order to target these buildings. And in other words, all you have to do is funnel some of these buildings and the bowlers will go in. There's no second layer funneling required because in order to target that second layer, 
they're going to already be inside the base. So it makes it very easy right here. They step into the compartment. He goes ahead and uses a jump just because uh, the wizard tower was there, wants to be safe on uh, the entry, make sure his troops go in and get both air defenses, which they do. Um, great air defense dive, even gets the air sweeper, which was important. He could have froze that with his freeze spell because he will drop it right in that area. But uh, the sweeper goes down, which was a nice touch. Uh, awesome freeze on the eagle and on the inferno tower. Notice how once the eagle fires, the the uh, the shots come in. So you typically want to freeze the eagle um, right before it launches because once it launches, those bombs are going down and the troops are going to be targeted. So there's the rage, easy pathing towards the town hall. As I said, the last inferno, these expos, the air defenses, not even relevant towards the uh, last few moments of that town hall being up. So that's the benefit of coming in on the side is you don't engage both sides of the base, which tend to uh, to have you know pretty much all the firepower of the base if you come right down the middle. So um, awesome stuff. We'll fast forward because that dragon like targets the P.E.K.K.A. and the C.C. and all that good stuff. So um, take just a moment, but nice attack, 61%. Always good uh, percentage there uh, when, you get in, when you get in the 60s for sure. Let's move on um, to our next one, a Town Hall 10 base. Looking at, taking a look at this one here. It was 99%, but I'm going to go ahead and show it anyway because it was such a nice attack and it was pretty much a three-star, just not quite. Um, of course, miners, hogs, both good options, but let's not forget Laloon is always going to be on the table for these bases. And this one, um, there's a few good points of value to be gotten. Uh, these core air defenses are great for tanking because you can tank the Expos, of course, but you can also tank the Queen. Very reliable to drop a Skeleton spell because she's going to be targeting a Lava Hound on one of these central air defenses. So central air defenses are good uh, to, to have. Also these Wizard Towers right next to these air defenses. That's two Wizard Towers that you don't even have to worry about for your balloons because they'll be on Lava Hounds should they be there. And another thing here is easy to wall breaker in the king and let him just go off on all these air targeting defenses there's like four of them um so great value to be gotten plus the uh the pathing is really nice if you just kind of it's almost like miners if you create the funnel with the queen up here she can grab an air defense she can actually grab that wizard tower too i think the king can grab all of these defenses just suicide heroes on both sides really then laloon down the middle i'm gonna go ahead and start the attack just because it helps to see it as well but um really good base identification here uh if that air defense is free and it's also by a wizard tower or an archer tower or a valuable building oftentimes see okay i can drop my queen there how can i use my king uh suicide hero laloon is an underrated attack because it can finish off a base really quickly. Uh, Jess uses the king. I actually would have liked to see a few Valks, um, like two Valks with the king, because you'll see he doesn't get this archer tower and he doesn't get the queen. And had he got the queen, he would have had an extra two spell space. He wouldn't have had to bring those skelly spells. So I think that would have been a good investment, just a few extra Valks there, get the rest of that compartment taken out, including the queen. Um, so draws the hound loon to the bottom has an archer for that which is always good to get them away from the lava pups once they start um, coming so anyway the pathing's nice the king and the queen created the pathing on both sides almost like a minor attack like i said uh, there's the hastes now one thing i want to really point out um, that i've actually recently noticed is with heal spells especially town hall 10 don't heal as you're using your rages and your hastes the heals are almost good on their own because you don't want to speed a balloon out of a heal spell. You want them to stay in that heal spell. There's no reason for them to leave it. Um, it'll just take away that health uh, bonus. It's just not necessary. So notice how he uses all his rages, all his heals at the beginning of the attack, then he does, or always rages, all his hastes at the beginning of the attack, then uses the two heals at the end because um, if the balloons are being healed up, the fact that they're moving slowly isn't as big of a deal because they're in that heal spell. Um, it, it would almost hurt them to make to, to push them out of it prematurely before they fully got healed up. So uh, the next heal goes down right on that Archer Tower. Um, you'll see that he gets all the defenses taken out. The only problem is somehow that Lava Hound and Balloon ran back into the middle of the base. I'm not sure how that happened, but they get targeted, they get exploded, and consequently this attack is not a three star. 
but uh, really nice stuff there. I love the funnel with the suicide hero on either side. The value is definitely there. You don't have to get the infernos or the Arid or the queen taken out to do a Laloon. You can use the skelly spells. You can just fight through those uh, inferno towers. Very good try. Oh, so close to a three star there. Um, going to actually switch over to one of our own bases just because it was a really nice attack. And I think it's a very good example for this base identification. Let me actually go into scout mode real quick, just so I can uh, talk about it for a moment. Um, taking a look at this base, you want to look at a few important things for using miners. Um, of course, it helps that this base isn't maxed out. That's always a good thing for miners, even more so than other attack strategies, because they are kind of an overpowering attack in a sense. But um, notice how the wizard towers are the queen, if she does a walk, which you, you can often do, uh, queen walk one side, king walk the other, send the miners up the gut. That's typically what you do. Uh, but those wizard towers are uh, accessible. And look at all these like trash building storages not inside the base. That's a huge green light because if it's mainly just defenses, not a whole lot of high HP buildings, the miners will move through even quicker, almost as if they're a defense targeting troop, which gets you great value. So look for all those extra buildings on the outside of the base rather than in the base and uh, causing the miners to be held up longer. So um, other things to take a look for, I think the skellies are on air, which um, that is, that's gold for miners. If the skellies are on air, huge green light because there's such a big issue for miners, uh, those ground skellies. Um, so that's another important uh, part of this. And some Teslas on the outside that the king can get um, you can get that cannon as well. So he's not just going to be tanking and clearing trash. He can actually reach a few of those uh, defensive buildings. And of course, the Inferno pathing, always important. Uh, they're right next to these storages. So the miners can come in, target these storages. Then they'll go to the Inferno Tower. No risk of them walking, or not walking, but pathing around, which often can be a concern in these minor attacks. <clears throat> Sorry, it's late and my voice hurts, but um, only a few more attacks to talk about. Uh, this is Devin's base getting wrecked, and it is Phantom uh, doing the wrecking. So I like how he drops the queen and the miners almost at the same time. They funnel each other, so it doesn't have to waste a whole lot of troop space in funneling, because the funneling is the miners, it is the queen walk. Uh, no funnel troops needed, really. So the queen steps up starts getting these defenses. The king on the other side uh, starts clearing out that uh, part of the base and also some uh, free defenses for him as well. Now the queen, um, he does too good of a job funneling with that wizard almost. The queen is not going to walk the right way, which um, made this a lot closer than it should have been. Um, the inferno pathing, very easy. The queen is right there as well to be taken out by the miners. So none of this was that big of an issue. Um, his heal spells, I think, were pretty good as well. Um, it's just that, that queen is just sitting there on the lava hound, which was not supposed to be happening. She should have been taking out uh, these defenses along here, but she's not. So those are all going to still be up for the miners. Uh, the king right now just going down as he triggers that last giant bomb on his uh, side of the base. So great value um, from the king. Uh, but the problem is a lot of the stuff that the queen should have taken out is now surrounding the miners and picking them off as they move through. And uh, it's going to come down to the queen, really. Go ahead and fast forward just for sake of time. But uh, the queen going to shoot through some of these walls. The miners, unfortunately, go to the outside of the base, which can happen. Uh, but, you know, they, they, they come back in from time to time. Uh, you kind of have to get that initial push. But the, uh, the miners that were still inside the base were killed by those defenses. Uh, but here's the queen. She steps up very close at the end here with these last two archer towers. But the, uh, the attack is successful. Um, it's a three star. And we'll fast forward to the end here. Good base for miners for all of the above reasons. And uh, nice attack. Um, let's move on to number 18. Um, just two Town Hall 9s to take a look at. Starting with... Iron Lion, um, sorry, I keep forgetting to go into Scout View. I'm not used to doing that first. Uh, great base for witches. Um, and don't be fooled by the wizard towers on the outside of the base. As long as you're doing the strategy that involves the uh, four healers, two on each pack of witches, 
you're, the, the wizard towers aren't even a big deal because they, they can't take out a witch that's being healed up. So don't worry as much about that. Look at how the base is set up. And this one's just perfect. It's a nice little rectangle. So the kill squad can be jumped through just two jump spells, a few wall breakers. Uh, they can go pr through about three quarters of the inside of the base. Then the outside's very easily taken out by these witches. Um, not a whole lot of giant bomb threats. Just a very nice, easy pathing. Uh, the walls are nice and flat. Just couldn't have been better, really. Um, but uh, yeah, just awesome stuff. He has a little bit of a, I, I, that's what I was trying to say, he has a little bit of a wall breaker or a jump spell fail. You'll see what I mean in just a second. But um, the base is so uh, well designed for this strategy that um, it, it really doesn't matter. So uh, one thing I like is dropping like a few minions, one especially on that town hall, weakens it up so the witches move through quicker. They don't get caught up in that town hall forever. So a nice touch there. Uh, but comes in with the witches first, the two healers on them. And like I said, they're not going to be in that much of a risk for those uh, wizard towers because they have the healers. Even if the skeletons die, the witches are still difficult to take out. Um, there's the bowlers. Nice second bounce onto that one Tesla down there. And look at the jump spells. Drops two jump spells, uh, fat fingers, both of them on the same area. So it doesn't have that next jump to get into the queen compartment. Makes this one a little bit difficult. Uh, it takes a little bit more just brute force from the kill squad. But they'll fight their way through. So uh, that works out. Witches moving through on both sides of the base. Nice flat wall, like I said, for them to take out. And um, oftentimes the, the biggest bases to worry about for using a witch strategy are the ones that have a weird layout in terms of walls. There could be some kind of weird spiral structure, like a, a, a weird circle or something. Um, but typically, as long as the base is laid out in these nice cohesive compartments that allow a uh, kill squad with the queen, the king, golems, bowlers, um, to move through and, and no risk of them like straying to one direction as long as the the jump spells can just let them from compartment to compartment um, it's it's a viable strategy for a lot of bases and the outside of the base pretty safe here a nice straight shoot for these witches we'll fast forward to the end here because he has so many troops left up despite that jump spell fail um, good stuff to the iron lion Okay, one more to take a look at. This one was kind of a fun attack as well. Um, some good Town Hall 9 action for sure. Um, weird base. has. I think I've seen this before, um, before this war. But one thing this base offers is a very free hog lane. And I talk about hog lanes a lot because they're important. Basically, a hog lane is a... Um, a path for your hogs to take. It's like a runway almost. Um, it's no wider than the width of a heal spell. So basically you can heal an entire pack of hogs as they move through because they're not gonna spread out too much to the point where a heal can't cover the entire pack. So this is like a hog path. The width only goes up to two defenses, um, which is uh, easily covered by a heal spell. These air defenses are far enough away they don't really become an issue for the hogs. So basically he can kind of send in a kill squad for the essentials like the queen. I think there's like a lava hound in the CC. Then just send in a mass hog. Um, just take out this entire section. Uh, eventually they will cut across but by the time they've cut across he's gotten such good value that it really doesn't matter. He just heals them up again and is an easy three star. Um, 35 hogs queued up. Nice stuff to see there. Uh, just goes ahead and drops down the king. A few hogs, a few wizards. Just wants to come in. Um, I believe, I don't know if this was a cleanup or not, but it must have been without, because uh, it seems like he knew there was a lava hound in the CC. So um, just comes in here with the king. Going to grab um, the, I think a little bit of a Tesla farm. Yeah, Tesla farm there. The defensive queen uh, has the Valks queued up as well. Valks are always a great way to, if you kind of think to yourself, you know, I have my a good like suicide king, but I, he, there's so much value. If if I could just add a little bit of damage and hit points to that, I could get um, some even better value. And that's definitely the case here. A few extra Valks takes him the extra mile uh, to get the Tesla farm, the queen, the bomb tower, all that taken out well, with just a very small push. <clears throat> so here come the hogs now. Um, I believe he has hogs in the CC as well. Um, like I said, the heal spell can cover the entire lane of hogs. A few peel off onto those air defenses, but not enough to really uh, deplete the actual main 
pack of hogs and any meaningful way. Still has that uh, poison, which I think he'll use on the king here. Now, at this point, the hogs start to cut across, but um, and they do spread out a little bit, which makes it difficult to heal. But like I said, he got such great value before, and once again, another kind of hog lane forms on the opposite side of the base here. Giant bombs, all the kinds of traps start to go off. But at this point, he has too much left over. He got too good value, you know, too good a value for that king for the initial hog push that there's no way the rest of the base can be any kind of issue for the hogs with that phenomenal start he got off to. Still has both his poisons actually, um, which is kind of my pet peeve in a way is not using the poisons. It seems like that's the most common thing people just don't drop and um, better safe than sorry. He has it now for the king which he actually kind of misses there. Uh, the king looks like he kind of walked out of it, but has another one for the king. Um, pretty much swag poisons at this point because um, he had the queen's ability. So awesome attack to FPHP judge. And that'll do it for this base identification video. Hope you guys liked it. A um, little bit of a long video because I wanted to you know, kind of look at the base first, talk about it for a moment then show how and why it was attacked. So let me know if you want me to continue the series. If you like it, um, let me know what you think in the comments below. I'll be sure to check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bisectatron out.